I told myself that I couldn't start any new projects until I had completely reorganized my sewing room, like deep clean, full KonMari. So if you feel a very frantic energy from me, it's because I have spent so many hours preparing for this moment. This moment when we test my sewing room's armor class, like how much destruction can it handle? We'll find out. We're gonna make some pants. So the great news is this video does exactly what it says on the tin. I have 11 tips on how to get good at sewing fast. I'm going to serve those while I'm making a pair of pants. Also, hi, welcome to my channel. I feel like I should have started with that. I feel like a bad host who low-key didn't expect anyone to show up, and when they did, I was just so excited about everything, I forgot to tell people where the bathrooms are. It's the third door on the left. I'm Lizard Lee and I've been cosplaying and sewing for 12 years. I am entirely self-taught. I learned everything from cosplay.com forums and YouTube and making so many mistakes. It feels too authority figure to sit and like impart wisdom and also I'm just itching to make something again, which is why I decided to just combine the two activities. Also, this is gonna be a top 11 tips because I felt weird about it being 10. It felt too on the nose, like, oh, it just happens to be the same amount of fingers I have. No, it's 11 this time. This isn't gonna be a full tutorial situation. I'm thinking of this like if a friend of mine were getting started sewing a cosplay or even just an outfit and was starting to feel frustrated, what kind of advice would I give them? Also, I wanna give the asterisk. Leveling up your sewing fast doesn't mean you can thread a machine for the first time and be churning out flawless garments in a few days. <laughs> making mistakes and making a lot of work is legitimately the only way to improve at anything. This isn't about silver bullets. It's about working efficiently to keep motivation and inspiration going. But that's a bad YouTube title, right? I can't call this video how to level up your sewing with efficiency and mindfulness about avoiding burnout while also gaining material literacy while I make pants. So when I say fast, pretend I'm actually saying all of that. The cosplay I am working on is I'm okay. I'm like, actually, I think it's a little spicier if I don't give the full info dump about who I'm cosplaying right at the beginning. I will say this is my original design of a character from a book. The book is about lesbian necromancers in space, so let's make some pants for a terrible space lesbian. I'm starting with this because it's honestly my philosophy towards all craftsmanship. It is some of the best life advice I've ever gotten. You can apply it to so many different endeavors. And the funny thing is, I got this turn of phrase from a skincare subreddit in like 2017. The long way is the short way means that it is going to take you less time to do the thing properly without skipping steps, with all of the double checking and tests than it is to say, ah, it's fine, and maybe have a catastrophic failure. If I take the time to, you know, really make sure my grain lines line up when I'm cutting a piece of slippery fabric, I'm not gonna waste a day of cutting and then like sew it all together and have it just look wrong. If I take the time to transfer all of my markings from a pattern on the very first time or mark all my notches on a self-drafted pattern, I'm going to save myself a lot of heartache than if I were to just say, oh, it's fine. Building up this habit of trusting that I am saving myself time and heartache in the long run by having a more like lawful good sewing approach has genuinely saved my skin more times than I can count. This is probably controversial because I feel like the standard beginner advice is to choose something easy to work with, like cotton. And I don't love that as blanket advice. I think that you should be really over ambitious and chase your dreams when you're sewing, especially if you're sewing a cosplay and no one ever dreamed about cotton broadcloth. I taught myself how to sew going to college at NYU, so I would just go to the garment district and buy fabric that I really liked. It meant that I made a lot of terrible mistakes, but I was really excited about all of my terrible mistakes and it motivated me to improve my sewing so that I could work with all of the really cool detailed fabrics. 
Yes, do have some self-preservation. Don't start with something slippery or too stretchy or that you can't actually pin. But at the same time, you wanna pick a fiber that makes you feel like, yes, I, I want this on my body. It's worth the extra legwork to feel hype about the fabric you choose. I feel like a lot of the woes I see people have with fabric comes from them just not understanding it. So this is my basic guide to become friends with fabric. Fabric is graph paper, not a notebook. It's Midtown, not Greenwood Cemetery. This directionality is called grain line, and if you're working with a commercial pattern, it will tell you which direction the grain line should be going. Don't get fast and loose with your grain line. It will tank your project and fill you with regret. The other vocab terms here are fiber and finish. Fiber is what a fabric is made out of and finish is how a fiber is made. So cotton or polyester are fibers and satin or jersey are finishes. This is the kind of thing that I feel like should be in bold on every single sewing tutorial ever because it can get really confusing since sometimes people refer to a fabric by its finish and sometimes they refer to it by its fiber. And it does matter, like a, a silk organza is gonna behave differently than a poly organza blend. Not better or worse, just different. So when you are picking out your fabric that makes you feel like a, a sentient heart eyes reaction meme, make sure that you know it's fiber and it's finish. Ask the person cutting it if you're not sure and then nothing can stop you. Y'all, my iron, my two irons, I should say, because I have a nice one and I have a scuzzy one, they are actually my most important and most valued tools in all of cosplay. Top, top number one. Before you cut your fabric, you should iron it. Before you use your pattern pieces, you should iron them. Yeah, you can just iron the paper. After you sew a seam, unless there's a specific reason not to press it, you should press it before moving on to the next step. It's only gonna get harder to press seams as you go along and as they get more and more buried in the finished garment. And it is going to make an unbelievable difference in your finished garment if all of the seams are just pressed. I feel like a lot of people are afraid of scorching their fabric and that is a good and healthy fear to have. But honestly, just press a test scrap before bringing the full heat. Every fabric is gonna iron differently anyway. It might not seem like a big boost at first, but once you hit the finish line, and all of your seams are so crispy and tasty, you're gonna be so glad you did this. I couldn't make a video about sewing without telling you that if you are having a problem with your machine, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the thread tension. If you get to the end of a really long seam and there's a terrible bird's nest waiting for you underneath, that is a problem with the thread tension. If you finish a seam and it just seems like puckered and a little bit too tight, that's also a problem with the thread tension. If messing with the thread tension doesn't help, try swapping in a new needle or just re-threading the machine. Sewing machines can be intimidating. They're like complicated pieces of machinery and the user manuals for them are very, very thick, like my favorite women, but the overwhelming majority of headaches from them have very simple fixes. I think of this holy trinity, the, the re-thread, the needle, and the tension wheel fiddle as the kind of sewing machine equivalent of turning it off and on again. And same as with their iron, you can save yourself so much worry and woe by just grabbing a test scrap before you jump into your big pieces. That's honestly what I do almost every time I'm sewing a new piece of fabric, because again, the long way is the short way. So here's the thing, when I started cosplaying, there were no commercially available patterns. Drafting my own and making a lot of mock-ups was the only way I could go from, you know, thinking a lot about an anime character to actually being dressed up like that anime character. 
And when I say make a mock-up, what I really mean is basically making like a draft version of the garment out of a fabric like muslin, and that way you can make mistakes and figure things out without running the risk of messing up the gorgeous fashion fabric that we're so in love with. Honestly, most projects that I do, I will do two, three passes of mock-ups just to make sure things fit really well. This isn't necessary 100% of the time, but I will say when I skip the mock-up step, I am accepting the consequences either because it's something I've made before like this or it's something that just isn't really fitted. Either way, most of the time I really am team mock-up. I think they honestly always go a lot faster than you think they will. Even if you make the mock-up and everything fits perfectly and it turns out you totally didn't need to use the time, that makes me feel like I'm on some god tier shit, you know? It, I think it's worth it still. Can I include me saying god tier shit? This is the part where I start to get excited and also the part where I start saying things that some people might find just straight up heretical. Um, so let's say there is a fabric that you really love the way it looks, but it's just not quite right for your project. Like maybe it's too thin, too drapey. Science has a solution for us and that solution is interfacing. Interfacing and fabric layering completely changed the game for me because interfacing, the the thing when you put one piece of fabric behind another um, opens up like an infinity of possibilities for ways that fabric can be used. Uh, interfacing can be iron-on like I'm doing right now where the fabrics bond together. Interfacing can be the iron-on glue itself. Um, interfacing can be just basting two fabrics between each other and treating it like one single piece of fabric. Since I'm sewing for cosplay, for things to look really cool but not necessarily stand up to everyday wear, I get pretty fast and loose with my interfacings, y'all. I would say every single major project of mine has at least one, like, major interfacing crime. So this is me seducing you to my life of crime, you know, get weird with your interfacings, experiment with fabric layering, and you will start to learn how fabrics work together so much faster than if you were, you know, sensible and had fear. <laughs> So here's my confession. I love fit adjustments. I know so many people hate them, but I think they're really fun. And I'm here to tell you why they're fun. I think they're like the, you know, advanced settings on a menu in a piece of software. So we've already established that fabric is graph paper, right? And the human body is definitely not. There are a lot of curves there. So how do we make those two kind of come together? It's fit adjustments. If you ever used a commercial pattern and when you put it on, it had a bunch of weird kind of like bunches and wrinkles and places that it didn't on the package, it means that that garment needs fit adjustments to fit you specifically. So that's things like um, inserting length, taking out length, changing the angle of darts. It can get very technical and my brain, for whatever reason, thinks of it like a fun puzzle in a video game. What I do is I pull up a list of common fit adjustments from Google and I look at whatever I'm making and I try and read the wrinkles and read the creases and figure out where I need to do what. This is not a rabbit hole you need to go down right away. I have lost days getting really finicky about there not being any wrinkles on a garment, but it's a great tool to have in your back pocket if something is not laying correctly and you really do feel like you wanna to get to the bottom of why. I made my first historical build in 2014. Um, I had been sewing for five years, but I was still really nervous to do like historical stuff. And I definitely wouldn't have gotten through it if I weren't doing so with a group of friends 
one of whom was also a newbie like me and one of whom was like a total veteran. As an extrovert, I don't think I would sew if I were just like alone in my house. Also, you know, that's no longer a thought experiment, I just realized, because like I actually didn't sew a lot this past year when I was just alone in my house. Um, Anyway, my point is the community aspect of making things is always going to be, you know, a huge part of the experience and a huge part of getting better, asking questions, building community. Um, and one of the best things you can do to establish that early on is to make sure that you're asking specific questions. When my friend Laura um, would help me fit my very first corset over Skype, I didn't roll in and just say, you know, help me, what am I doing? I had very specific and very actionable things I wanted to check about, you know, the bust line or the length adjustments that I had made. I feel like actually making friends and like building a community is like a whole separate video. So this is just a little footnote to say that when you do make those connections, when you are asking for help, just make sure you do it in a way that is respectful of other people's times. It will make them want to help you out more in the future and you will probably help them at some point in the future too. I hope it's okay that this one is just kind of me taking an Earl Grey break because I need a little more caffeine. This is a very mixed metaphor with the parachute and the pit, but you get the spirit I'm going for. Um, here's like a true honesty moment. Every project I've ever sewn at some point, I am just absolutely convinced that my work is hot garbage. Like bad at sewing, bad at ideas, bad at all of it, and I should probably just stop. I almost never like put this online because I don't want to seem like I'm fishing for praise, but I'm telling you right now, that is a real thing that happens for me in private. And the only good thing about the fact that that hasn't stopped happening, even with all of the experience I have now, is that I do now have a lot of practice figuring out what I can do to yoink myself out of the pit of despair. Weirdly, a thing that always helps me reset is going on a run to the garment district. I know that I'm a very like materials first crafts person and it always feels like a hard reboot to just be surrounded by all the cool materials and like snap out of my own funk. Whatever your reset is, just pay attention to it and also like break the glass when you need to. It's not going to make you a better crafts person to dig that pit any deeper. I am feeling like a small pit of despair, not a full size one, but a little baby one. Um, just about time and getting everything done and I think that I am going to go on a little field trip to the garment district because I also know that I need cording to lace up the sides. So a little field trip and then we can keep trucking. This is my final wisdom after you've completed the full quest line. This is Aang after he unlocked every other spiritual doorway in him, finally opening the chakra for cosmic significance. This is the most galaxy-brained advice I can give to anyone who is struggling with construction and feeling frustrated, and that is to just Google it. Cosplay wouldn't have exploded the way it has in the last decade without people sharing their expertise. If you're having a strug, I guarantee someone else has had that same struggle and probably posted about it. I am a compulsive Googler when I am crunching. I Google things that I literally know how to do, just in case there have been any like advancements in, in chiffon cutting technology. I figured out how to rig my Her Universe transformation dress from literally the first result when you Google Cinderella transformation dress. There's a lot of rude ways to tell someone to Google something, so I want to give this advice with compassion and empathy because genuinely learning how to do your own research and going down rabbit holes will make you unstoppable. If they can do it, you can do it. Also, I believe in you. We done did it, we made this pair of pants. I'm gonna finish lacing these up um, and then I'm going to put them on and see what they look like. I have an Edwardian um, corset cover that I made a few years back that I think will fit with the vibe really nicely and yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see what they look like.
Oh, gosh, you just can't tell me anything. Oh. I'm so obsessed with these. It feels so euphoric to be building and sewing again, to dress up like a character I absolutely love from books that, like, changed my brain cells. Cosplaying from a book is the kind of thing you really only do if you have a profound obsession. And yeah, the books about the lesbian space necromancers have not left my brain for months. The actual title of the book I'm cosplaying from, or books, is Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth. They're part of the Locked Tomb series by Tamsin Weir. They are unlike anything I've ever read before, and I can't recommend them enough. These pants are part of an Ianthe Tridentarius cosplay that I'm working on, and it was really fun to mix a very personal project that's kind of just for me and my love of these stories with this video. I hope the nuggets of advice in here are helpful and motivating and also Hey, thank you for sticking around. It is profoundly terrifying to start a brand new venture like this channel, and it really means so much to me that you took the time to join me. It really helps show YouTube that this little baby channel should grow up big and strong if you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know what you thought of this. I have a lot more builds planned that I want to document and share on here from things that are way more accessible than like experimental spec horror sci-fi. I think that's it. Um, I will see you next Friday. And if you're the kind of person that makes stuff, go forth and have fun making stuff this week.